Welcome back to Swimming in the Deep. Today we're talking about stringers. In this case, I'm working on the ones on my deck. My deck, new set of stairs are going to come down, turn, and go back down here. Now, I had some stringers left over from my prior deck, which ran the other way, and I set my landing to the same height as the old one, so I was able to save a stringer and use it as a template. I made some adjustments, but that's how I got the top one set. I have been forever confused about how a stringer works. How do you know the angle? How do you know the individual rise versus the run? So hopefully I'm gonna sort all that out today because I did not save a stringer from a separate height for the lower part. So I've had to stop and really figure this out. And no two videos you watch seem to be the same. So I'm going to lay some groundwork how it finally clicked for me. All right. You've got your rise. You've got your run. You need to um, figure out what your run is going to be based on whatever treads you're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use these two by sixes, which, of course, is inch and a half by five and a half. And then I'm going to have just a little bit of overhang on each one. So I've determined that my run is going to be 10 and a half inches and that's what my template was up there too. So that's set. My run is set. So you determine what your run is going to be. Um, but if you're going to use that or even the thinner boards, your run is going to be the same with the thinner five quarter boards. Where it does come into impact is the, the height of your, of your rise. But and that's only on the top and bottom stairs. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I had to figure out a whole new stringer here. The one thing you want to focus on out of everything, don't worry about the angle. Don't worry about the individual run yet. The one thing you want to focus on is the height of where you're trying to go to, the overall height, from the base. And in this case, it's my patio slab down here. So to do that, you want to determine your number of stairs that you're going to need. It matters if they're going to face here, like it butts clean up and flush against that. And that's the way that I'm doing mine. So this is for that use case when you have a flush set of stairs. So I know my, in, my height because I figured that out. It's 56 inches. And I know that because I measured over there from the slab up. It's roughly about the same as it is from there to there. I know that slopes down a little bit, but it's 56 inches. And that's good because I have a round number to divide into my number of stairs. Now let me show my math over to the right. And hopefully I'll have a little pop-up down here in the corner. Now your residential height of stairs, your target is about 7 inches tall for each individual risers. So I'm going to take 56 and I'm going to divide it by 7 just to figure out how many stairs I'm going to have. In this case... 56 divided by 7 equals what? 8. So I'm going to have 8 stairs. Counting the top stair, which is not cut out. See, that top stair is not cut out. So I'm counting that one. So in my case, actually, my stringer is going to have 7 stairs because that last step is going to be right there. But I still have to take that into account. So um, then you take the the number of stairs that you have, and then you divide again that number, in this case 8, by my overall 56. And that determines that I'm going to be at about, what, 7 and a quarter or, uh, for each individual stair. And I have to then adjust for the top a little bit because I've got 5 quarter board there, and down here at the bottom I'm not going to have any kind of tread come up. So here's the next key thing that I recommend beyond anything else you do is get yourself some cardboard and make a template. That at the current time of this recording is $33. So you don't want to mess that up, right? So you get a cardboard template or you make one out of a box turned sideways and then cut out that looks like your two by two by 12. Yeah, two by 12. In this case, I have a two by 12 by eight. 
The reason why you want a 2 by 12 and not a 2 by 10 is because you want a whole lot of a whole lot of meat left there to hold your stairs up. In this case, code you in most places seems to say 5 inches at least and that's well beyond that in those areas. That's why you go over the 2 by 12. All right, so take your template and then start to set each individual rise and run all right remember we said you need a framing square for this a nice framing square make sure that it's marked equally and this one's on eighths and this one over here has eights and sixteenths so you want to pay closely attention when you do this and we said that my run is going to be ten and a half inches so I put that here and, I, and we said that my rise According to my math, it's going to be seven and a quarter inches. All right, then you draw that triangle and you move up and you draw the next one and the next one and the next one. Like I said, you'll end up adjusting for this bottom step because you don't have any tread to step on down here. And I did, I adjusted my math and that put that at five and a half inches there, roughly, roughly, because. It, was, it would be another inch and a half, and that would give me seven here. I know I wanted seven and a quarter, but then I had to think about my top step, the difference in the tread. Up there is five quarter board, and that's a quarter inch difference, so that's why I set that to five and a half. Don't be confused about that. Just get you a template and start marking triangles on it. All your math will fall into place eventually. I had to use two templates because I forgot to adjust for the top and the bottom stair. And that's how you calculate the rise and the run. And that angle of your stringer will fall dead into place. Don't worry about the angle. On your bottom stair, you'll want to, of course, after you draw out, draw more stairs than you need if you have your template long enough. And you'll figure out your bottom stair will become your base. Hopefully that was as straightforward a video as you've seen. You're still going to have to do some calculations on your own. And you're still going to have to figure out how you match your stringers. And all that's going to be different. And here's what they look like after you've taken your template and you've adjusted it. A little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom. But again, the most important thing for you to realize is figuring out that overall rise and then dividing each one in there. You may have to adjust for the top step because the difference is in your rise for your boards. A smaller one here I had, and then the bigger inch and a half here. And then at the bottom, remember you may have to adjust your template because you don't have a tread that you're standing on here, so it's gonna be a little shorter. Uh, regardless, all of these are seven and a quarter. Um, height when you start walking up them because I've made all my adjustments. And that's how you cut your stringers without being confused like I have been. Thanks for watching Swimming in the Deep. Like, share, and subscribe.